I'll ask Warren to put his arms out like so. Warren, don't let me press down on your elbows. As I'm pressing down here, I'm seeing if I feel a different side to side. Super strong both ways. I want him to be nice and relaxed. I want to hit the tendon. Come in. And I see a twitch. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Warren and in one week, one week, Dr. Sebastian, he's getting ready to graduate from chiropractic school. Um, he's been doing an eight month rotation with us, a preceptorship, an internship, a lot of different names out there for different schools. Logan, it's a eight months, um, other schools are four months. If you're an intern or if you're a chiropractic student out there and you're looking for a place to land in Towson, Maryland, we're just north of Baltimore. We're an awesome city, highlights of Towson now. Thank you, Luke. Um, but yeah, it's a great little area to practice and um, it's, a, it's a really fun environment because it's, um, it's myself, which is part of the fun, but not all of it. <laughs> Definitely Dr. Nick, Dr. Alec, Dr. Brady, and my father, Jeff, who's been here for um, 30, Six years, 72 years, I don't know how many long. Long time. A long time. He's, we got the wisdom from him, and then uh, honestly, the guys coming out of school teach me a lot and keep me fresh and remind me of all the things that um, I don't know, which is always very, very humbling and, and I'm appreciative um, of that. So, Sebastian, more than anybody, has made me um, a smarter and better clinician in the last eight months, and hopefully, um, I've been able to show him a good time here, too. Without a doubt. Nice. Without a doubt. So, it's been our goal to not only walk you guys through a really good neck exam, there we go. but also talk a little bit about the preceptorship along the way. Sure. Because there's a lot to share about that. So, we'll work and talk at the same time. Clinically relevant points. Dr. Warren here, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, has been having some chronic lower left-sided neck pain. That's been bugging you for how long? Well, probably since my lacrosse days, um, I used to use my head a lot. Really? For hitting I'm, I'm not. I'm not really a lacrosse guy. Is that something that you guys do a lot, or is that your own personal style? You're not style? supposed to. I would say that you're supposed to hit with your shoulders and your arms a little bit more. <laughs> okay. Um, but I was facing off. I was always down in the like in the mud, if you will. I was. I just like to, to to fight on the ground for the ball. That Fair was, enough. That was what got me in at, 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 to play collegiate lacrosse. Okay. And somehow I stuck myself in there just to be a little bit of like a workhorse. But in that process, I just abused my body. Um, and so I've had some neck pain since then, off and on. I've had, um, but really just chiropractic care has helped me feel good. Um, so anytime it pops up, I get adjusted, it feels much better. If I lift really heavy overhead, I have a hard time pressing overhead. Old shoulder injury, and the neck can play a role in that too. So, to help. 100%. Okay. So the, one of the most important things that you're gonna do during an exam is collect a, a, a detailed history. And someone like Warren, who has a, a good relationship with his body, is very in tune with his body, will be able to tell you things like he's telling me right now as far as what makes it worse, what he thinks caused it, which is worth a lot. You know, the patients, you know, we, we study a lot out of the textbooks, but the patient is the expert on their own experience. So they're going to give you a lot of information. So don't, don't miss out on those opportunities. So let, let's get right to it, Warren. Take a seat right here. Sure. What I like to do, go ahead and face gap so that we can both face the same way. Range of motion is the first thing, kind of the, the lowest hanging fruit, and it's, it's an easy place to start. So Warren, go ahead and turn your head this way as far as you can for me. Good, and I'm just noting it, how easily he can move to that side, how far he can go. That looks good. Is there any pain, pulling, tenderness when you do that? Oh, uh, no. Let's see you go this way. How does that feel compared to the other side? It feels harder to accomplish that goal. So when Warren turned to his right, that's where you're feeling on that kind yeah, of level. Yeah, build up right there. That's the main area of complaint, correct? It's right there, yep. Yes. So when Warren turns his head to the right, really smooth, he got a little bit further than he did compared to when he did on the left. And then, of course, hearing from him, it was a little bit tougher. Now we're already kind of tuning into the spot where we already knew he already had a, uh, a little bit of a complaint. Go ahead and look up to the ceiling as far as you can. What we're looking for here is that his craniofacial junction, or really just kind of the front of his forehead, is parallel to the ceiling. See, and I'm, I'm always learning new things. Right there, that would, that'd be right there. What's up? So, what, any pain pulling your tenderness with that? No. So no, it feels pretty good, actually. Warren moves really well into that. that was perfect. You, you, you had the appropriate range of motion. Let's do the opposite. Bring your chin down to your chest. How does that feel? Feels good. With this, we're looking for his chin to make contact with his chest. He moves well. Just feel a little pulling. A little pulling on the left side again. Yeah, that's, that's just different than the right. Flexion overall is pretty good. 
I think you could go a little bit. You're not quite touching your chest with your chin, but right. that's okay. I'll get there for you. Go ahead, look straight. Let's see lateral flexion. So bend your head this way, trying to get your ear to your shoulder. Any pain pulling or tenderness with that? Just stretch. Good. Turn this way. How does that feel? Just a stretch. Same spot? Or yeah, is it the opposite uh, side? It's always on the opposite with this one. This I don't I feel more of a stretch pulling from like my scalenes and my trap on the left side, but not as much on that right. Um, but yeah, overall it just feels a little tighter on the left. So Again, the, the, we're, we're remembering all these little bits that Warren is giving us because we're kind of building our case. And already I have some things that I'm suspecting, but I'm going to keep putting Warren through this exam and seeing if I'll either prove myself right or wrong with what I'm already kind of thinking is going on. A nice way to kind of continue through the ranges of motion. I didn't hit on this before, but what, when Warren is moving himself, that's active range of motion. So he's using his muscles to pull his head and neck into the positions that I'm asking him to. The other two ways we can check range of motion are passive and resisted. So passive will show us if we have some real like bony blockages of, of his uh, range of motion. So I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. Turn it first, any pain, pulling or tenderness. Mm -hmm. And also when I'm here, if we want to be real chiropractors, we can use our hands to get some feedback as far as what it feels like at the end range. And that's going to give us even more information as far as what tissues might be involved. How does that feel? Feels good. I feel like I uh, avoid it a little bit. If I don't know, this is just me kind of honing in. I feel like I tilt down to the left and to the right, I glide nice and smoothly. So I almost avoid like C0, C1, upper cervical spine with rotation on the left. So if, if that's ever, what I just feel. Not all patients are going to be able to give you that detailed of, <laughs> uh, of explanations, but when they do, you, you take that because it's really valuable. Yeah, I'm super locked up up there. Yeah, yeah. Passive again, deflection, pain, pulling, or tenderness? No, not at all. Uh, back into extension. How does that feel? I feel a stretch into my jaw with that. Like the back of your jaw front? Just, just okay. to pull through here, man. Gotcha. Now we'll do resisted range of motion. Side story. I get some weird neuro symptoms in here, though, because I had Bell's palsy, so my face went, par it got paralyzed completely. Because so I had a tick bite. I had meningitis, I had Lyme disease. Long story. So I had Bell's palsy on the side. I still feel numbness and tingling, like, randomly. Interesting. Yeah, it is. Just kind of yeah. a little side story there. Taking everything into consideration. Yeah, that, that one's not playing a role in this, but I just thought I'd let you know. Important to know. Uh -huh. The third and last way we can test range of motion is we're not really going to be moving him very much because it's going to be resisted range of motion. This is going to test the integrity and the sensitivity of his muscles that he's been using. So, Warren, I'm going to try to turn you to the right. Don't let me. Any pain with that? Uh, no, not at all. Let's go the other way. How about that? Oh. Good. I'm gonna try to bend your head forward, don't let me. So what this is doing is testing the muscles that act to accomplish the movements that I'm telling Warren to resist. Mm -hmm. And if there's pain in those muscles, then we start to go down the rabbit hole. Maybe there's a sprain, strain uh, with the muscles in those areas. I'm gonna try to bend you back, don't let me. Don't let me. There he goes. Any pain with that? No, not at all. I'm gonna push your head to the left, don't let me. Super strong, any pain? Nope. Any pain? Nah, feels good. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So while Warren's right here, we can get right into the orthopedic test for the cervical spine. So there's a ton of tests, right? Like you could you could go online and find like a 10 page list of every single orthopedic test you could do on the neck. But there's like a collection of maybe four or five that I feel like give you a lot of information for common things that are wrong with, common problems that people have with their neck. Would you agree with that? I love that, yeah, yeah. Tr truly. So I'm gonna show you the ones that I use most frequently if, I, if there's any ones that you like a lot that I'm not doing, let me know. I'm, I'd be happy to do those. Sure. Sounds good. First and easiest one is foramenal compression. So you have little holes between your vertebrae that your nerves come out of. With this test here, what I'm going to do is press on Warren's head. And what that's going to do is you can imagine the vertebrae are squishing together and shrinking those holes a little bit. Any pain with this, Warren? Mm -mm. I can bias one side uh, compared to the other. If I bend him this way, I'm biasing the right. Any pain with that? Mm -hmm. Nope. Good. Any pain with this? Mm, no. Uh, so that's pretty good. If that was uncomfortable, we would uh, think that there's maybe some sort of space occupying lesion or irritation to uh, a nerve root in that area. Mm -hmm. But Warren's doing well. He felt good. We're going to stress those even more. This one's called max foramenal compression. Warren, you're going to look at my fingers, mm -hmm. follow my fingers with your head and your eyes. Any pain with that? Nope. Good. 
as Warren moves his head back into rotation and extension, he's closing down those IVFs. A little a pinching lot. right there. Yeah. Yeah. So again, tuning into the, the main area of complaint that Warren has. The next orthopedic test that I like for the cervical spine is a distraction test. So this is doing the opposite, right? So Warren's gonna face forward and rather than pressing down, I'm gonna lift up on his head. Any pain, pulling, discomfort with that? No. Nope. If there was loss of integrity in the, uh, the ligamentous structures around the spine or even the muscles, then that would be a little bit uncomfortable for Warren. Or provide relief, right? Or would provide relief in the case of uh, there's actual stenosis in the cervical spine, you're right. That's why it's important to know what you're testing for and what the positive and negatives are. Man, you just did range of motion, passive range of motion, resistive range of motion. You did a really good cluster of orthopedic tests. Smoothly so, I might add. Nice job. Good start. Are you ready for some neurological examination? Stay up, baby. All right, so stand on up, Warren. Stand here and face me. Our nerves do two main things. They provide sensory information from the areas that they supply, and they provide motor innervations for the muscles that they feed. So we're going to test both of those. First, we're going to test the muscles. We know with pretty good confidence which nerves supply which muscles. So I'll ask Warren to put his arms out like so. Warren, don't let me press down on your elbows. As I'm pressing down here, I'm seeing if I feel a different side to side. Super strong both ways. That's the C5 nerve that goes into the delts. This one, Warren already knows what I'm doing, but I'm gonna to try to pull his fist away. You start with gradual pressure and then ramp up slowly so you can get a good feel. This is testing for the C6 nerve. Super strong both ways. Arms staying up, I'm gonna press, testing the tricep, C7. Really strong. Really strong again. Down by your sides, wrist back. Warren is a pro at this. It's almost like he knows exactly what I want him to do. With a lot of patients, it's not always this easy. But I find getting them into the position and saying, don't let me break you out of this or resist me. So what's so good about a, a really good physical exam like Sebastian's going through right now is it, it really lets you know that the person in front of you is in your wheelhouse. You're able to, to assist them with the problem, right? And so this is kind of... Um, this type of hierarchy where we're going through motion and then orthopedics and then neuro exam kind of gives us an idea of the severity of the problem, where the problem's coming from, and then a, a base, if you will, to compare to the next time we come around, the next time Sebastian looks at my neck and checks it out, right? Exactly. So, but he's doing a great job so far. So Warren already knows I'm gonna test the finger flexors as your C8 nerve. Don't let me uncurl. Really strong. Really strong, hands up like this. Finger extensor C7. I'm pressing down on Warren's fingers. He is resisting me, and he has been super strong through everything. Yeah, so we have a grade of strength on the exam for the muscle. There's a clinical scale, and when he says super strong, it's really a five plus, right? So Brooks over there, she's getting ready to go to chiropractic school in the fall and so she's kind of writing down the different parts of the exam that are positive that are weak um, and you'll see that he's going to go through reflexes here in a second too another area where there's a clinical scale uh, where he describes the if there's a, a positive finding or in what, and where i am right now I'm all negative findings right yeah. yeah cool which is a good thing which is a positive thing best for last finger abductors, I'm going to, adductors, excuse me. I'm gonna put my fingers in between Warren's and I'm gonna tell Warren, don't let me pull my fingers out. Really strong. Again, these are, it's kind of tough because you can only really have so much strength. These are small muscles here, but when somebody does have a deficit, it's very obvious. Yep. All right, strength-wise, Warren's good. Like I mentioned before, sensory is another important thing that we should test. So, what I like to do for this, roll the sleeves up, these are called dermatomes. They've mapped out where on your skin has the sensory information for the, the nerve root levels. So what I'm gonna tell Warren to do, close your eyes. I'm gonna swipe you on either side. Let me know if it feels the same or different, okay? Mm. Same or different? Same. Good. Same or different? Same. Palms out like this for me. Same or different? Same. It's a cool bracelet. I earned it today from my six-year-old patient this morning. <laughs> Very good. A little shoulder instability. Got two stars and a bracelet. Look I'm, at you. I'm pretty much set for the rest of my life. <laughs> Arms out to your side. Good. Same or different? 
Same. Very good. So, if one had a nerve involvement, we would expect to maybe find some weakness in the muscles and find some discrepancies between between the, the dermatomes, the sensory that we just tested. A really good way to do that, because it's kind of a difficult thing for patients to pick up on, like same or different. Yeah. The side that you expect them to have full sensory on, so the side that isn't the side of complaint, you'll say, okay, this is 100%. If this is 100%, what would you say this is? Yeah, and a lot of times it's a really loose test in terms of how accurate that can be from a sensitivity standpoint. So if you're going through school and you're learning orthopedics, that's one that's helpful. There's a little pinwheel that you can get for people with carpal tunnel syndrome that you can do two-point discrimination. That's way more accurate. Um, well, we got one of those there. I don't know if yeah. you've ever used that before, but usually that is going to be treated or used with somebody that has a complaint of numbness or tingling pins and needles and I don't have any of that stuff but right. we thought we'd show it to you here. Yeah that's definitely valuable and, and more to Warren's point there's not one single orthopedic test that you're going to be able to draw your final conclusion from it's taking all of your findings considering them all as a whole and that's where you're going to be able to draw your diagnosis from again drawing a lot of the information from the, the thorough history you get from your patient. All right. Let's go ahead and do some reflexes. Let's do it. So reflexes your deep tendon reflexes these are going to be more accurate than, than your dermatomes, okay? Because we, we know with, with really good reliability what nerves provide the reflex, and if the reflex is absent or diminished, then we know that there's an involvement at that level. So everybody knows, I, I gotta say that, I got the hammer in my hand, you're sitting here. Everybody knows this one, right? Everybody knows that reflex. It's like you go to the doctor, they have their hammer, they hit your knee every time, right? It surprises but, you every time, right? But it's amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> there are other reflexes like that in your body. I was amazed to learn that when I got in school. So the first one, let your arm go nice and relaxed. Tricep. The tricep tendon comes down and inserts right on his elbow. The alecranon process for you anatomy whizzes out there. And same deal, I'm, I'm having him be nice and relaxed. I want to hit the tendon. Come in. And I see a twitch. Got it, be right there. We're going to show the rest of these really quickly. So triceps was good. Next we're going to do biceps, what you can do. Find the bicep tendon. I can find it on Warren pretty easily, but if you have difficulty, I would tell Warren, make a muscle, like flex your bicep, and then that, that tendon goes right into your thumb. I'll cover the tendon with my thumb, strike my thumb, you saw a twitch there, brachioradialis, you can go there, or you can even go higher up on the muscle, and you'll see a little twitch. Oh, you have one? Yeah. Nice. All good twitches, eh? Wonderful twitches, neurologically sound. Treatment plan? Treatment plan, we're going to... Adjust. Warren had some motion restrictions in his neck as we found through our orthopedic exam and range of motion. We hadn't got to this point yet, but as I was putting my hands on Warren, I didn't vocalize this. Higher tissue tonicity on that left side. And our favorite tool for that, hmm. dry needling. You love that? I love dry needling. Okay, One of the too. most effective soft tissue modalities, in my opinion, for reducing tissue tone. All right. Dry needling adjustments. And then my favorite, we're going to rehab you up. Oh, We're okay. Do some rehab. He's going to do that. Um, awesome. Hey, thank you. So I can't take credit for all that because he did a lot of work at school and he probably came in here doing that exam already. But he practiced it a lot over the last eight months and was able to apply it to patients as well as understand insurance and treatment plans and then seeing, hey, how, how good am I doing what I do? So it's been a fun eight months. We're going to celebrate him a little bit today at lunch. Um, you'll find out more about that soon. And then, uh, and then tomorrow, we're going to really celebrate um, with that, the whole office office Christmas party. Cool. Good. Yeah, that's some fun. Awesome. Thanks for watching. We'll be back for some treatment. Okay, everybody. We're back. Me, Dr. Warren, continuing on after the uh, exam we did on his cervical spine for the chronic left-sided lower neck, upper shoulder pain. So come on over here, Gab. Check this out. So like I was mentioning earlier, we really like dry needling to address the soft tissue component of these sorts of uh, complaints like Dr. Warren has. Um, really focused in on the musculature that's involved in these sort of complaints, erector spinae of the cervical spine, upper trap, levator scapulae. These are for Warren's chronic rib irritation that he had, again, just stimulating the tissue around it. The way that dry needling works, quick and dirty, two main ways. Number one, the stimulus of that needle going into these tissues creates a controlled inflammatory response, which sounds scary, inflammation gets a bad rap, but really when in the short term, that's your body just healing itself. Increased blood flow, increased healing cells. Number two, on a neurological level, again, the stimulation of this needle being inserted into the muscle sends a signal to the brain that essentially tells the muscle it can calm down, it can let go a little bit. So after dry needling 24, 48 hours later, those tight tonic muscles, end up being able to relax a little bit more. We'll be back with some adjusting after Dr. Mark's done here.
feel good. Thank you.